I hope you can hear me. There's some wind today and some traffic, but I'm at the Three Swords in Hafsu, and it's pretty cold today. Windy, been windy for a while, but I'm going to try and tell you a little bit about what the bike is in here. Why the Three Swords are so important in this area, and I grew up in this area, and I also. Met this guy that grew up in this area, and he is amazing. He grew up here, and he knows everything about this area. He has written a lot of books, but you can introduce yourself. Well, uh, my name is Atlas Gosten, born and raised not far from here, and uh, very interested in especially local history. So, so uh, Viking Age, of course, when you live in in uh, the Stavanger region, Viking Age has to be the the main main part of the history. Very important for this region. So I, I think maybe first we can explain a little bit about like the Vikings. There's a saying saying that um, all Vikings were Norsemen, but not all Norsemen were Vikings. So can you explain what is a Norseman? Well, Norsemen is is uh, pretty much the people living in the the Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, major um, mainly. But but uh, there were sort of uh, Vikings at that time. It, it, the name Viking is discussed because a lot of people say that the Vikings were the people going out into the raiding part of it. There's a lot of uh, focus on the raiding and the negative part of the Vikings. But uh, but uh, there were, I mean, pretty much uh, more traders and craftsmen than there were raiders. So, but still, that was the time in in the, the around the seven thirty seven nineties to to uh, thousand and sixty six. That was the time uh, what people did in Europe. They were fighting and, and uh, warring. So the Vikings weren't sort of special, except they were very good at it. And Norsemen were the people from from uh, Scandinavia, and and the Vikings were the people of the of the Norsemen going out into the raiding part of of uh, the Viking Age. So we're kind of like hiding behind the three swords because it's windy and a little bit snowy or, and, uh, and rain today. Um, but I will try to show some more for the viewers. But can you explain, because you said 790 to 1060 ish is like the Viking Age. Yeah. So yeah. what's the significance of like the three swords? Why are we here? Why is this like... Well, let's start with, with the, the years we mentioned, because usually people say, well, in Norway at least, they say the Viking Age started in year 793, because that's the year with the first known and, and documented Viking raid, where they where they uh, Vikings raided the island of Lindisfarne in... Uh, I'm getting dizzy. In, uh, <laughs> in uh, northern part of England. And it was a small monastery. They raided that and brought that uh, goods and probably slaves, trolls, back to Norway. And probably they came from Hogaland, this region, because that's the closest uh, to, to England. In addition, uh, it, they say the Viking Age ended in 1066, when, when Harald Harode, uh, one of the Norwegian kings, went over to England to, to fight. And at Stamford Bridge, he was killed. He was trying to capture all of England and was killed over there. So that's, that's the, the, uh, the start and end of Viking Age. And then 100 years in, in, the, in, uh, in 872, there was a Norwegian uh, Viking. He had been out raiding in Europe. And he had seen over there in, in Europe, they had kings ruling over big areas. As in Norway, there were chieftains and, and small petty kings ruling over very small areas. And he wanted to change that. He wanted to be the king of the whole, well, what we today call at least the southern part of Norway. So he, he went up from Oslo, fought battles against the local chieftains and, and, uh, and, uh, and small kings. Won battle after battle, and then it ended up at the final battle right behind us, out there in Hafasfjord, where the main, big, big, and major sea battle was fought in 872. A very exciting battle, and, and we're estimating around at least 100 major ships on each side. One big Viking ship could, could uh, have around 200, 250 warriors on board. So it's a lot of, lot of warriors fighting out behind us. And Harald Hofhaga, his name, he won the battle and became the first uh, king of, of today's Norway. 
Yeah, so that's what unification means. Like that, that, that this was a battle, this was a place where he united like Norway, that there was only one king yeah. and not a lot of different kings. Exactly, all over. exactly. And after after that, if you wanted to be a king in in the hundreds of years following, if you wanted to be a king of Norway, you had to could be able to show a direct relation or descendantship from Harald Hofaga. So, so the king's following, 100 years later, Ola Tryggvason wanted to be a king of Norway. He had to prove that he was a descendant from Harald Hofaga. Right. So I know there's this exciting story about uh, Harald Feinhair, which is like the English uh, name for him. Fair hair. Yeah. Fair hair. Yeah. So is that from the sagas? Like, have they, how do they know it's true? Because I grew up knowing, you know, that he didn't shave or he didn't, you know, didn't, his nails were growing and everything. Well, he was he was flirting with this girl, and and she told him she didn't wanna she didn't want to marry him before he had conquered all of Norway. Uh, it's an old saying, old saga, but and and the saga continues and says that he didn't cut his hair. He promised himself and everybody else he wouldn't cut his hair before he had conquered Norway. So I guess after the battle here, he found the nearest barber shop <laughs> and, and went in and got a very nice haircut. Yeah, I think maybe it was kind of hard for him too to fight with all that hair. Yeah, but the, <laughs> most most uh, Vikings were fairly. But the thing is, they were long haired and long beard. But Vikings were very neat. Uh, they took care of their hair. So, so in England, in York, which was a Norwegian Viking Viking city, actually in England, uh, what they find most is actually combs uh, made of, of antlers. So, so they were very particular, took care of themselves. They bathed. I mean, that's why we have uh, Saturday in Norwegian is Lørdag, which means Lørdag, washing day. So the Vikings took a bath every Saturday, which made the British looking on, holy shit, they are clean, because they, they didn't take one bath every week. But the Vikings did, and they were very clean. So I know that there's a lot of different like stories about the Vikings, and why, why were they like settled here? Why was the southern part of Norway so important? Well, I don't know. I mean, the whole of Norway was important in, for various reasons. I mean, basically what they could trade. And the northern part was very famous for, for uh, walrus tusks, uh, the thick skin from walrus and, and fur. And then southern, coming further south, was, was uh, fish, dried cod. And then coming down here, it was important due to the closure to, to Great Britain, to Denmark and the, and the continent. So here from, from Stavanger, especially Hogalan, was uh, Hogaland is the, the, the area in Norway where you can find most what's called insular founds, which is archaeological uh, items made in Great Britain or the, the British Isles, North England, Scotland and Ireland, basically. And, and Hogaland is the place where you find most of those, which shows a very close contact with the islands. So Hogaland was very important to the, to, to, at that time, the highways, now you can hear a helicopter flying over us. We, today we use helicopters and airplanes, roads with cars. But at that time it was a ship. That the, the, the ship lane was the main highway. And outside here is, is the North Sea. Just behind us is the North Sea, where you can sail to England and anywhere you want to go. So trade was extremely important for, for the Vikings. Also a place to live. And, and uh, you all know Iceland. Iceland was discovered by the Vikings just before the Battle of Hafasjord. And after the Battle of Hafasjord, Harald demanded that everybody in Norway had to accept him as a king. If not, they had to leave the country. So a lot of people who didn't like him left and then they settled actually in Iceland. So that's when the big settlement of Iceland started after the Battle of Hafasjord. Yeah, because I you know I read about that too when they went to a different countries, and that's why there are some of the language that still, you know, you can still understand something in the England, like house, who's. Oh, yeah, and there's, some of the many, word, yeah. there's many, many words, rucksack, and, and oh, I can't mention all of them, but there's a lot of, <laughs> yeah. especially in, in England, in Great Britain, there's many, many uh, names or, or words in addition to place names. So if you go to England, you'll find a lot of old Norwegian place names. And if you go to, to I mentioned York, city of York, you will still, they're using the city names or the street names. Of, of uh, that the old Vikings gave different uh, streets and, and roads over there. 
So there's a lot of lot of uh, still you can find a lot of uh, traces after the Vikings. Yeah, and um, if you have something more that you want to say, you can t tell the viewers right now. But I want you to kind of close up or talk about like it's pretty far from this place from Norway to America. Yeah, it is, and and <laughs> that's the amazing thing because we know the Vikings went to the whole what do you want to call it, the known world at that time, the, the, the world that, that uh, were known in Europe at least. They sailed down to the, to the Mediterranean, in, all the way into Jerusalem. Uh, they raided in Spain, they raided in Italy, Sicily and Greek. And they also went from Sweden eastwards into today's Ukraine. And, and it was the Vikings that established Russia and Ukraine and Kiev. So, so they went all that way and all the way down to, to, uh, to uh, Caspian Sea, Black Sea. And the other way, they went westwards. They went to England, Ireland. They discovered Iceland. They went onwards. And the guy who discovered Greenland, he came, Eric Raue, he came from Jaren, just south of here. And he discovered first Greenland. And then his son, Leif Eriksson, as you know, discovered America and uh, launched the meadows. Is, is a plain in Newfoundland where they where they have found traces of the first Norwegian settlements in on the American continent. So so the Vikings went not only discover or, or explored the known world, they actually expanded the known world at that time. So so they left a lot of a lot of uh, traces all over the, the the known world. In addition, in addition, like I said earlier, they are mostly known for fighting. Are you freezing on your hands now? Yes. <laughs> They know for, they know from the fighting and being very very good fighters. Then at that time with swords and axe, you, you, if you were fighting, you are brutal. So they were known for that. But they should also be known for trading and craftsmanship. They made made an amazing the Viking ships were unique at that time, both at sailing fast and sailing uh, upward towards the wind. So they were amazing handicrafted, very very uh, efficient people. So. so uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, heritage from the Vikings that we need to focus on now. Not only the brutal things that the, the monks and, and priests write down in their annals. Yeah, because that's what we see on Netflix and all that stuff. You know, you see all the Vikings; they're like fighting, and you know, yeah, and it's, that's what sells. They're like Hollywood. Hollywood, too. Hollywood wants to sell yeah. that, but if you yeah. go into Discovery and History Channel and stuff like that, more and more you'll see. The, the amazing uh, craft jewelry they made uh, in wood, in, in, in uh, antlers and bone and stuff like that. They made an amazing, uh, they're very, very good uh, handicrafts and, and uh, did yeah, quite a lot of engineering. And, and just to mention the Viking ships, when they sailed, they could sail up to 20, 21 knots and, and cross up against the wind. When Christopher Columbus sort of secondly discovered uh, America <laughs> many hundred years later, his ship could sail seven, eight knots, and they couldn't cross up against the wind. So, so it was a technology that was uh, way ahead of its time, really. And they were they were so fast. That's why they could also could surprise the enemy. It's amazing because they couldn't even Google their. No, you know? no, no. I don't think <laughs> so. I don't think so, at least. Okay, uh, we can finish up here, but I know there's one thing that a lot of people are wondering. Uh, why is it that a lot of Viking helmets have horns? Because that's not what they used when they were fighting. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, we know of horned helmets uh, back in the Bronze Age for cer ceremonial uh, sort of uh, usage. But the thing, the, the first time uh, Vikings with, with horn uh, was in, in German operas. They, they were writing sort of Nordic operas, uh, doing, doing uh, stories about the Vikings, singing operas, and uh, ordinary helmets didn't look very impressive, so they put horns on them to make them look uh, scary, and that has stuck. And, and we're never going to get rid of that. But uh, I hate it when I see people with horns, but uh, at least when they're trying to be serious. On a football game or whatever, yeah, cool. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, not, not uh, serious Vikings do not have horns on their helmets. Right. Well, thank you. I'm looking forward to this summer because you guys have reenactments yeah. right here in Hafelsjul. We have a big, big Viking market right over there, and uh, there will be uh, Vikings living there. I mean, 200, yeah, 200, 250 Vikings living here for a whole weekend with fighting, with the archery, with the, all kinds of crafts. So it's it's an amazing event uh, every summer.
So if you want to come to Norway, learn more about the Vikings, you have to make sure that you come to this area. And if you uh, look it up, you can find when they have the reenactment and join in on all the fun. Thank you. Yeah. You're okay. So we kind of talked about the three swords yeah. in Hauschu, but we didn't explain anything about why there are three swords right there. No, first of all, uh, if you put film the swords, you can see that is actually the size of the Vikings. They were so big, so they <laughs> need the swords like that. That's no, I'm what kidding. I Okay, that's what I thought when I was a little kid. Yeah. I told you this on the phone, but I'll tell the viewers too. I grew up in this area, and I, I, you know, when I was a kid, they told me, everybody, teachers, parents, everything, they told me that the fight was actually right there, like on that hill. That's where the fight were. So that was, I mean, that's what I thought, but that's not true. No, it's not. It, it was further out in, in the Hafus Fjord. It's, it's, a, it's a big fjord with, with a big area out in the middle where they could get fit all the big ships. And these three swords that were put up as, as a, a, to, to commemorate the battle, they symbolize that now this is the final battle. Now we can put the swords down into the ground. We don't need them anymore. So, so these three swords are symbolizing that after Harald won his last battle, the war fighting should be over. Right. So that's what it symbolizes. Because they haven't been there since the year 800. The swords? No. Yes. No. Sadly <laughs> enough, uh, I, if I can't remember, I don't remember right, but well, I think it was eight, in 1982 uh, the swords were put there yeah. to commemorate the, the Jubilee of the battle. Because every time I show uh, my kids in the class, something about the viking age they always ask me is it is it real is it from the viking age so the three swords are just put out there as a monument, as a monument. to commemorate the battle and to to sort of symbolize that after the battle now finally there's there's peace so we can put the swords down very good okay do we want to add something yeah we... sure there there is one more viking who's very famous at least in norway alex jalikson mm -hmm. And, and he lived in Sula, just on the other side of the fjord, actually the part of, of this region that I'm from. And he's definitely the most famous Viking without being a Viking king. So in the old sagas, he's the person who's mentioned most without being a king. And Alan Schalkson, he was a very good, he was actually a Christian, and he was a very good Viking. He had his own slaves, his trolls, but, but he, was, he was unique in that way that he actually allowed them to buy themselves free. If they, they, they were doing the work for him all day, and afterwards, in, in the evenings, they could grow their own corn, do the handicraft fish and stuff like that, and make money. And after two, three, four years, most of them have made enough money to actually pay Erling the amount he had paid for them, and they would be free. That was unique in Norway. Nobody else did that, because there's your slaves, you could do whatever you wanted to. But he actually allowed them on one condition. They had to live in this region, clear new land, and of course pay tax to him and when he needed it they would support him in in battle so so uh, that's one of the the very positive things about Erling and he was a, he was a, a alliance builder he was married to the the sister of the king Olaf Tryggvason Astrid very very cool girl very tough lady so so uh, the viking ladies had more power in those days than than later in, in the, the hundred years following, in the mid, middle, age, middle Ages. So, so the Viking Age could, could uh, be very tough ladies. Uh, it was the women who was the boss on the farm. She had all the keys. So uh, if dad wanted some of the snacks and the goodies, he had to ask her for, for permission to go into the, the, the house, housing all the goods. Yeah, I made this uh, little video about the Iron Age farm. And so we actually discussed that. So it's a good thing that you repeated that yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. I want to go home. Hare, 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 hare. 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 hare.